Hey everyone, thank you for watching my brand new video. Today we're going to talk about uh, 10 things that you can do your car to winter prep it. But the thing is, I've done other videos in the past about just general maintenance on your car. I've done things like how to check your fluids and what fluids to check, uh, maintaining your battery and how to check it, and even a video called 10 things uh, that people should do with their car, but they don't. Um, and I didn't want to repeat the stuff that's in there. Some of that's kind of rehashed stuff and I wanted to look for something different and new to include in the video in conjunction with that other videos. So the first thing I'll mention is the 10 things I'll have in here is not just the 10 things. It's the 10 things plus the other stuff that's, that's in the other videos. And to kind of recap some of that, as I said, it's things like uh, maintaining your battery. Uh, I'll have a list because I can't remember all of it. It's so much stuff. Um, checking all your fluids. Uh, checking your engine for leaks and, and if there's any damages because let me tell you repairing, repairing your car in the winter especially if you're a do-it-yourself mechanic way worse than trying to do it in the summertime so you know check and make sure there's no leaks there's no issues if there's anything that needs to get repaired that could be that could go bad in the winter time get it done um, you know checking your tires uh, checking your tire pressure uh, checking your brakes and your suspension uh, check and replace wipers as needed uh, checking all your lights and checking all your switches uh, and then general maintenance in the car that includes washing the outside of the car and just keeping the interior nice and clean. Um, so these are the things I have, for example, in other videos. Again, if you want more details, make sure to check out uh, those videos as well. But I want to do 10 unique things that we can say for winter. So some of this stuff, some people will say, I, I don't really need it all. Some people will say, yeah, it's great ideas. Uh, you pick and choose as you need, but these are things that actually I, um, pretty much all of it I do on my own. And I do recommend it because it's what's uh, brought the longevity, longevity in my car. So with further ado, let's get to the video. Before I do, just a reminder, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you don't like the video, dislike the video. That lets me know what's going on. If you guys like it or don't like it, feel free to comment, good or bad. Uh, if you get a comment bad, give good constructive criticism. Don't be like, oh, I don't like how you talk, because you know that's not helping anything, right? Let's face it. But yeah, honestly, feel free to leave any feedback. But let's get right to it, shall we? So the first thing you want to do is grease your doors up a little bit and I mean just greasing up on the hinges and stuff over here and down over here I see for example over here mine moves over here like this Let me just move the door so you can see the motions of it see and you can see I've already sprayed that's the white that's on there it's grease and of course spraying in there as well uh, what this does is it helps locks out most moisture and stuff like that as well. Now here, this is just more of a maintenance thing. So that's what you're spraying here for is if you keep it moist, keep uh, it greased and lubricated, it'll keep moving, it'll stop dirt and contaminants. And if you have snow, snow can get in there and it brings dirt with it, right? When this dirt comes in, it kind of goes onto that. Um, brings the dirt with it and it settles and then you get all these stones and stuff and the car starts grinding it out Right, it's like sanding it down as time goes. So you want to um, Grease that up to kind of help prevent that and this here is just greasing so that you can actually um, uh, Prevent any freezing in case any water gets in there and it gets really cold You could freeze and actually freeze this part as well newer cars doesn't happen as often as older ones but I use it as a general blanket statement because I'd rather tell the people who can be affected and it, uh, then forget, worry about the people who won't be affected right plus it's just good general maintenance anyways so that's the first thing I would say is just to grease up the doors and their hinges second thing you can do is get good winter mats pants saver mats actually uh, this is good now this may seem like you're like what mats really but you'd be surprised how much of a difference this makes especially depending on where you live so if you live in just a place that's bitterly cold but you don't get a lot of snow or slush this may not apply to you, but if you live in a place, for example, where you get a lot of snow, heavy snow, things like that, have this mat can make all the difference in your car. Especially with the problem is this. Using my car, for example, my Grand Prix, as many of you know, right under here is just the base kind of carpet that came with it, the carpet mat. And that's got a little bit of a rubber layer underneath. And then it's just this carpet here. And underneath there, straight pretty much underneath there is another kind of insulating. And after the insulating is the body of the car. Problem is, is if you just have these regular mats or you have like cheap uh, mats don't have these deep grooves in it over here to help prevent slush and stuff from going over, it all kind of seeps in into the body of the car, it gets down into past the carpets. And the thing is, especially in the wintertime, it doesn't get to dry. So that sits there and especially when you have road salt and things like that associated with it, it can start eating away the inside of the car inside out. 
and uh, you don't even know the damage has been there because it's all past and it may have dried off over time and you had no idea damage was already done. It's just something that wouldn't happen overnight, but doing that is a very good preventative thing to prevent your, the, your car from developing rust and everything on the inside of the body of the car. And when that goes through, oh man, that's a pain. So just something like this can make all the difference in the world. Now this one is not used nearly as much today as it was a uh, big issue 20 years ago, but there is still something that go, they go hand in hand. So the two that go hand in hand is either A, have some lock de-icer, or B, make sure the remote on your um, your battery for your to unlock and lock your car, your actual fob, is um, charged, or you have a new battery in there, if especially it's been a few years you've changed it or anything like that, keep an eye on it. And I'll kind of elaborate on both because both involve really just getting into your car, right? So what we're talking about first here is, of course, if you have a car that you still have power locks or you have a lock, uh, like over here, we have a key lock, you know, making sure to have some de-ice on you is always a good idea to get into the car. If you ever, you know, leaving home and uh, this is completely frozen over, you're not going to get into the car. The lock is going to be completely frozen. Uh, however, this was only a problem really on the older cars. Cars these days, you all have the key fobs now where you can just lock and unlock your car, right? So the only alternative to that now, now one is actually good to keep this here because let's just say your battery dies or something, right? So it's still good to have some lock de or somewhere um, that you can easily access. Um, so in case the battery should happen to die, but let's face it, that doesn't really happen too often. But I would still say, make sure you're always checking your battery, right? Because uh, that battery, that little battery in there can die at any time. And the last thing you need, especially being on the road, um, you go and all of a sudden you try and lock or, or unlock the car and it stops functioning. That's happened, hasn't happened to me, but it's happened to other people I know. You know, it was, it was one of those things where they always mean to change it. Oh, I'll get it done, I'll get it done. And then you forget and then one day you're stuck, right? Worse yet, some of these now come with, uh, they're rechargeable, so you charge them up. Um, just like you would a cell phone. And if that happens, make sure that keeps that cell always charges while you hate to be locked out in the winter time. So the next thing you wanna check, and this is something I actually, just from experience, I know a lot of people don't check, is check your heating just to make sure it's working, to make sure it's good. And uh, what you're doing here is you're just gonna cycle through, so you put it to your heat maximum heat setting, warm up the car, obviously you'll have to warm it up a bit, so you have to run it for just a couple minutes to get it nice and warm. And then just whichever vent settings you use, you'll run it to and just make sure it's working. So for example, we'll turn it on here. Now I don't use the the blowing on my face, I hate, hate, I hate heat blowing on my face. But you know, we just put it on and we test it to make sure the hot air is coming through. And of course, we switch it over to the feet. That's what I like to use during the winter is the feet, make sure uh, it's running through there. And you always just reach down and feel. And then, of course, you can just put it up into the frost because you need that, of course, to defrost your car. And you want to make sure that's running as well. And that's all it really is. You're just checking to make sure everything's working optimally. So when the time comes, that first big cold time that hits, uh, frost and you want to be able to warm up your car you want to make sure your heat's running so you want to check that out repair anything if you need to flush your system re uh, replace the heater core replace the thermostat you want to get all that done beforehand the next thing you look at doing and i do recommend this is have an emergency kit now, there's different emergency kits to different degrees a lot of places like even big box stores like walmart and stuff sells them in preset bundles um you can of course make your own this is my kit it's old as dirt <laughs> I've had this thing since my first car. It's probably been, I don't know, I would say 15 or 16 years old, honestly. This thing's been around for ages. So, all for me, uh, again, dep depends on your varying quality, uh, degrees of uh, comfort and everything. You see I've got some booster cables. Uh, I've got a light. Cheap, but it works. Just connects right to the battery. Then I got some gloves, and as you can see, they've been used a couple times. I've had to use this a couple times, and it's come very much in handy. This is all I need for me, but for you, it depends. And of course, they have different kits out there. I mean, there's things out there that include stuff like non-perishable foods, blankets, first aid supplies, uh, windshield washer fluid, um, uh, fuel line antifreeze, um, flares, tire chains, flashlights, all sorts of stuff, right? So again, look at what you need and what you're looking for. Um, find what works best for you. Um, this works best for me because um, for my situation and for where I live, it's really all I need to get by. I check my foods all the time. I check everything else so I don't have to have that with me. So really, this is just what I need if, if an emergency comes up. So set your kit. Find what works best. Set that up. Next up, 
is ha having a good snow brush on you. Oh, how often, even when I go to work or anywhere else, so people just don't have these snow brushes or have really, really crappy ones. I mean, seriously, there are some really bad ones out there. Fine one works for good for you, but of course, if you have a big, huge SUV, you don't want to get one of those little short, little stubby ones, right? You want something bigger. This one here, for example, which has an extendable handle, right? Right, you want something that, that you can really use. Um, fine one works best for you. If you live in a place with a lot of ice as well, you want to get a scraper on the back of it. Um, they're very useful, very handy. Of course, again, be cautious when you're using it on your car. I think that goes without saying. And as you prep this, you can get ready to put this into your car for winter time. Uh, do make sure you wash off the bristles, especially if it's been sitting and it has been in your car. You actually, even if it has, because who knows, you've thrown it in and out, people get in and out of your car. You have all sorts of baggage and stuff that goes in there. Contaminants and stuff can get on this. The last thing you want is when you're scraping off snow off your car, something's on here that's going to scratch the paint and the bodywork of your car, right? You don't want to be doing damage. So give it a good rinse before you put it into your car or before you're getting ready to use it if it's already been in your car for quite some time. But uh, having a good snow brush is imperative to wintertime. Now aside from washing and your car and keeping the inside clean as I talked about for previous videos, it wouldn't hurt, especially in the fall time, to put a nice coat of wax on your car. This does two things. One, it helps seal and protect the paint from damage that will no doubt happen during the winter time. Um, two, by having a good wax, and I mean a good proper wax, none of this spray wax, I mean a good like paste wax, really work it in there, will help at least for the first little bit, keep any moisture and particularly snow, it actually helps kind of help clean it off. It gives a kind of a sheen on the body. And this helps when you have to clean off the snow. It actually does work. So having some wax on there does help a little bit in regards to, you know, the snow, the effect it'll have on your car, maintaining it, and also just for cleaning. This right here. This is the next one right here. And you may be wondering, what? What? Yes. Keeping your gas tank full of gas. Not halfway, not down the quarter tank. Full. Try and keep it full as much as you can, whenever you can. Why, you may ask. Why is this so important? Three main reasons. So number one just for general safety, right? So you're out on the road, you're driving around all the time, you're running on quarter tank, boom, you get hit with heavy traffic, right? So there's a big, huge snowfall, snow storm that comes in, slows you down. If you're living around the corner, it may not be so bad, but if you have like a 20, 30 minute commute, that could be an hour and a half commute. You don't want to burn out, run out of gas, or be stuck in a situation where that comes up, or you're out on the road, traveling somewhere, and again, low tank, I, that could come up. You don't want to be stuck in that in the winter time. That sucks. Second thing, prevents the buildup of moisture within the gas tank. Now, some of the newer cars, a lot of the newer cars these days, this is not as big an issue, but it absolutely still is. And that the, if you keep the gas tank full from with the gas and there's less water buildup and condensation, condensation, condensation in there. Jeez, I don't know what's going on today. Anyways, cond condensation that builds up inside there, which then freezes and it could freeze into your fuel pump or anything like that. Um, it could freeze into the fuel lines and it could prevent fuel from getting through into the car, right? So you want to prevent that as well. The third thing, which a lot of people don't realize, is that it adds weight to the car. Now, in the summertime, you know, having weight in the car, not a big deal. Actually, depending on how you drive, may not want that so much. But in the winter, it's imperative to keep traction on the car, right? You have the engine in the front of the car that's giving you weight in the front, but the gas tanks, most cars, the gas tank is at the right at the back, as in my car, which is just by the rear axle, um, right, sits right, literally right beside it. Like you, in order to change the lateral arms, you've got to drop it down because the gas tank is right there. Like you can't change it. That's how close it is. So having that on there, uh, uh, the gas tank full actually helps keep the traction on the rear of the car. So all that is important in regards to um, winter and winter driving. There's another thing a lot of people won't think about, but it actually does happen. And I have a couple of examples just to show you. And that's right there. A couple of stone chips. You want to get the stone chips repaired before winter gets in, especially when winter before winter gets in. Because depending on the type of snow chips you have, what can happen is, and what likely does happen a lot of times, a lot more than we would like, is water can get into these stone chips. When the water gets in, it, like again, if you have any melt off or as it rains and then it freezes overnight, all right, the water will get in and then it freezes. And as it freezes, as you know, ice expands. And when it expands, it's going to push on this. Depending on how much of a crack it is, it can actually cause it to spider web out. Next thing you know, you're going from a little tiny stone chip to a whole windshield that's messed up and you got to get it replaced. And that's going to be really hard to do when you're out and about. 
Um, especially again too, even if you if it doesn't spider up right away, you could have ice build up in there and it's pushing and creating pressure. You're driving along, you go over a bump and all that pressure that's in there, next thing you know, right away, crack right across. Don't want to be stuck in that situation. So if you have any of this, get it at the very least, bring it to one of those windshield guys and get it sealed up if it's possible. If not, get the windshield replaced. Sooner the better, because you'd hate to be driving out and be put into that situation. The last thing, is to just do a quick check on your battery. Now I know I have videos where it talks about how the different ways to check your battery, inspect it, do all that sort of stuff, and that all still stands here. But if you're not gonna do all that, at the very least, get the battery quick checked. And by doing that, if you have a voltmeter, just take your voltmeter, put the positive to the positive, over there, your negative to the negative, and just make sure you're getting at least the bare minimum is 12.2 volts. Really should get more, 12.6 is ideal. 12.2 means something is starting to go wrong with it, but it'll still start in the winter time and everything. But if you go anything below that, you may wanna consider getting a new battery. If you don't have a voltmeter, bring your car to the nearest shop. A lot of them, um, whether it be one of those big box stores or anything like that, or any of the smaller places, have somewhere you can take up the battery and have it tested. You may wanna do that too and have it uh, tested to make sure that it can maintain cold cranking amps and everything like that as well. Doesn't hurt to do that because, um, you know, again, you don't want to, when the battery gets really cold, it can that affects how the battery will work. It affects it adversely. So if you want to test all that out, just to make sure that when the time comes, you put that key in, you start the car, you're not like, rrr, 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 rrr. you don't want that. That's the last thing you need. So with that said, that is the list for us here. That's going to be the video. Thank you very much for watching. No, I lied. That is not the last thing. I have a bonus thing. This video is called Tens. I know, but I have an 11th. And the reason why I'm, I'm including this as an extra, as an add-on, as a bonus, is because for everyone I've talked to over the years, this has been an extremely controversial subject. And that is winter tires. Ooh, see? Hi. Um, winter tires is a funny thing because there's no real downside to having them to use in the winter time. They're engineered for winter. The, the grips and the treads on them are built for winter versus all season. The rubber is a little bit better. Uh, tends, I don't know if uh, how well someone, and a lot of people will say no, there's no difference. But all season, and especially summer tires, the rubber is different. They're meant to be grippier rubbers, but they also get very hard in the wintertime and reduce the grip. Winter tires don't do that as much. So there is benefits. The reason I'm including this as a maybe, as a sort of, as whatever, is because over the years talking with everyone at, to, um, on the subject, has created very much a divide, and it's a 50-50 divide where some people are like, yes, yes, it's fantastic, I love it. I personally, do, I'm in that side, I love having my winter tires, and I have my Z-rated summer tires. And then in the winter time, um, and then, oh, sorry, on the other side, people, there's a lot of people who are like, no, why do I need them? They're worthless, they're a scam, they're a trick, they're, um, they're not needed at all, I learned to drive without them, why do I need them now? There's a level of pride that comes with knowing you don't need winter tires. Listen, when I started driving, I started on a car that didn't have, there was no such thing as ABS and traction control. Um, not on that car that had it. I didn't, I learned on basic all season tires that didn't even have a lot of grip on them. You know, I learned, I've driven sports cars in the winters, all sorts of stuff. And it makes such a difference. There's a reason why people who have sports cars, and I'm not talking Corvettes, let's say even stuff like Camaros, and even people who have like uh, pickup trucks and everything, they have winter tires. There's a reason for that because the regular tires, especially let's say for example rear wheel drive, makes a big difference. But it does on the front wheel too. Um, I don't want to ramble on too much about this. I just want to say that if you, for me, as part of the video, I absolutely recommend winter tires. But I know some of you are going to decry it and say, no, the winter tires are not needed or they're bogus. Whatever, uh, if that's how you feel, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. If you can drive with all seasons, there's absolutely not, nothing wrong with that. I got by for years without them. But switching to the winter tires has made a huge difference, and I do support them. So I would say, if you're looking for something, go with that. I want to thank you guys once again for watching the video. Uh, I hope this has helped you out. Don't forget to check out the other, other videos too. I suppose when you tie it all together, there's something like 25 things you can do for the winter time. Um, and it seems like a lot. But uh, you pick and choose what you need. I mean, I'm not saying you have to do every single thing. But me personally, honestly, I pretty much do all of it. And some of it, for example, like the emergency kit, you do it once. You don't have to do it again. You set your kit, you're done, right? You snow brush, you buy that once, you're done. And then everything else is just maintenance and all that, all right? 
Thank you again for watching, and have a great day, and I'll see you next video.